Hi everyone, this video lesson is about the rules of lab safety. Now even though we aren't in the actual science classroom, it's important to know these rules because we may end up returning to in-person learning. And not only that, but some of these rules will be applicable for completing labs at home, and these rules also apply to any science course you may take in the future. First and foremost, you are responsible for your safety and the safety of those around you. Failure to act in a safe and responsible manner will result in the removal of all science lab privileges. We will start with general safety precautions. Number one, never participate in any form of horseplay in the laboratory. Be aware of others in the lab. Number two, no student should be in the lab or preparation room unsupervised. Three, be prepared for the lab by reading your procedure for any safety precautions. Four, do not sit on the lab benches because five students must stand while doing labs. Now this is necessary because we don't want any chemicals falling into our laps and we want to be able to move out of the way quickly if a spill were to occur or if a flame were to get too large or anything like that. Number six, keep work areas clean and free from clutter when performing experiments. Seven, no unauthorized experiments. So please don't go mixing random chemicals because you don't know how they will react when mixed and it could be dangerous. Eight, butane lighters, matches, and other flammable materials must not be brought to class. There is a gas line in the science classroom, so we want to avoid any flammable materials. Number nine, do not eat or drink or chew gum in the lab as your food may pick up harmful chemicals. 10, never taste chemicals or materials in the lab. That's not a great idea. And number 11, do not inhale chemicals unless instructed to do so. So don't go sticking your nose inside a beaker to smell. Instead, you want to use the wafting technique, which is demonstrated in this image here. So you take your hand and you make a waving motion to push the odor towards your nose. Next, we will be talking about safety equipment. First, we want to know the locations of all safety equipment in the lab, such as fire extinguishers, which are found at the back, eye wash station, and the first aid box, which is found at the front, along with fire exits and fire alarms. And of course, when or if we return to the classroom, we will point these out again. Next, safety goggles must be worn for all experiments, and contact lenses should not be worn. Use prescription glasses with goggles instead, and this is because contact lenses can trap some chemicals in your eyes. Goggles must always be worn when heat or corrosive chemicals are used. Next, we want to make sure we dress properly during a lab activity. Long hair must be tied back and dangling jewelry and baggy clothing must be secured. This is because sometimes there are open flames in the laboratory. Shoes must completely cover the foot and no sandals are allowed on lab days. Your teacher may also require additional safety equipment which must be worn. This could be something like an apron. Handling chemicals. All chemicals in the laboratory are to be considered dangerous. Do not allow chemicals to come into contact with skin or eyes. Check the label on all chemical bottles twice before removing any of the contents. Take only as much chemical as you need. Never return unused chemicals to their original container. Dispose of chemicals as instructed by your teacher. No chemicals go down the drain. Once again, dispose of all chemicals as instructed by your teacher. Never remove chemicals or other materials from the laboratory area. Look for WMIS or HHPS symbols on containers. We will be talking about this more on the next few slides. WMIS stands for Workplace Hazardous Materials Information System. It's an international system that provides workers with complete and accurate information about hazardous products. They use symbols, labels, and safety data sheets, or SDS, to keep people informed. Now we will be going over the symbols that make up the WMIS system. And once again, that stands for Workplace Hazardous Materials Information System. So the first symbol is the flame, and this indicates a fire hazard. 
These materials or products are prone to easy ignition and can burn rapidly, so they should be handled with extra care and be kept away from heat and open flames. Next, we have another flame, but this one is over a circle, and this means that there are oxidizing materials that readily give off oxygen or other oxidizing substances, and these can be severe fire and explosion hazards. This next symbol indicates corrosion, which means that the material can chemically react to metals, skin, or eyes, harming them in the process. Next, the exploding bomb symbol indicates a reactive substance that risks combusting or exploding. The symbol with the person indicates a health hazard, so the substance may cause serious health effects. The gas cylinder symbol means that there are gases under pressure, which also means there is a risk of it exploding. Materials with the skull and crossbones can cause death or toxicity with short exposure to small amounts, and this can be through contact with skin, by inhaling it, or by swallowing. Next, the exclamation mark means this substance may cause less serious health effects or damage to the ozone layer. And finally, this symbol with the black circle indicates a biohazardous infectious material, and these include organisms or toxins that can cause diseases in people or animals. Next, HHPS stands for Hazardous Household Product Symbols. So the Canadian Hazardous Products Act requires manufacturers of consumer products to include a symbol that specifies the nature of the hazard and also if it is the product or the container that is hazardous. Each symbol is made up of a picture and a frame, and the picture tells you the type of danger, whereas the frame tells you whether the product or the container is dangerous. So, these symbols are shown on this slide, and note that the octagon shows that the product inside the container is dangerous, whereas the triangle shows that the container itself is dangerous. So first we have corrosive. This once again eats or wears away other materials, including your skin. Next we have explosive, so this is at a risk of exploding. We have flammable, so this ignites if it's exposed to heat or flame or sparks. And finally, we have poisonous, and this may cause sickness or death if swallowed. Next, we are going to be talking about handling glassware. Do not use dirty or chipped glassware. Broken glass must be reported to the teacher who will give instructions for cleanup and disposal. There is a designated glass disposal container. Do not tightly stopper a flask where a gas is being created. It could explode due to the pressure. Clean drips off the sides of beakers and flasks for the safety of the next student so no one is touching any chemicals. Clean and return all glassware at the end of the lab. Heating substances. A Bunsen burner is a piece of a lab equipment that produces a flame, so one, light a Bunsen burner as instructed by your teacher and never leave a heat source unattended. Two, hot glass does not look hot, so handle recently heated glassware with tongs to be safe. Three, do not immerse hot glassware in cold water. The glassware may shatter due to the shock and temperature change. 4. When heating a test tube, always point the test tube away from yourself and others. Never look into a container that is being heated. Handling electrical equipment. 1. Keep water and wet hands away from electrical cords, plugs, and sockets. 2. Do not insert any materials into electrical outlets. 3. Do not have flammable materials near electrical sources. 4. Always pull electric cords from sockets by the plug and not the cord. 5. Make sure electrical cords are not placed where someone could trip over them. And 6. Do not cut open batteries since their contents can be corrosive and poisonous. Now let's talk about accidents and injuries. <coughs> be sure to respond to emergencies sensibly and immediately. Report all accidents and injuries to the teacher at once, no matter how minor they may seem. 
If chemicals are spilled on skin, rinse well with running water for as long as directed by your teacher. For chemicals splashed in the eye, rinse immediately at the eye wash station for at least 15 minutes, holding your eyelids open. If a chemical is spilled, immediately inform your teacher and follow directions for a safe cleanup. If a fire starts, inform a staff member immediately. Remember, if you are on fire, to stop, drop, and roll. When the lab is done, clean all glassware and materials and put everything away according to instructions. Wipe down the lab benches. Dispose of chemicals and materials only as instructed by your teacher. Sinks should be cleaned and should not contain any solid material. Disinfect safety goggles and return to designated storage. And finally, wash your hands with soap and water. Remember, if you're not sure about something, ask your teacher. This concludes the video lesson on lab safety.